moments, the stories you're about to hear may not be suitable for some. Listener discretion advised. All right now, boys and girls, we want to introduce... Please allow me to adjust my pants. Woo, woo, woo. Listen to me. Run. Run as fast as you can. I'm gonna give you what you need. Get ready for BAM Radio. Let me do one more time. It's Radio BAM, fucking idiot. What the hell am I talking about? It's Radio BAM. And now, and now here's BAM. Here's BAM. All right, Radio Bam, here's 28 Facts. Now, Jesse Margera of CKY just showed up. I'm here with Chad at John and Peter's. New Hope, Pennsylvania. New Hope. Jess, we're in a dilemma here. Okay. Do you think that I should do Dancing with the Stars? Now, not to mention the money is phenomenal, but not to mention again, I've never danced a day in my life, and it's probably going to be pure misery for me. To, <laughs> I don't even want to dance for one song right now. I don't want to. Now I gotta do it for eight hours a day rehearsing. I think he should do it. I think it will be pretty cool for your career, but at the same time, it is gay as hell. I'm with you on that. It's like you wouldn't like him less. Steve-O thinks that I should probably do it. We just called him, and Johnny and Kat Von D say no. It's a giant show. Well, see, they're in fucking LA, and everybody's so fucking competitive and up their asses. True. You. Are here in Pennsylvania, dude. They ask you to be on a fucking major TV show that everyone watches who isn't us. Like, yeah, we'll see it if it's on some fucking bargain basement fucking bullshit tape, but the rest of the world will see if it's on Dancing with the Stars. You need to be in front of those people. It's like infiltrating the fucking masses. It's dude. it's pretty much as big as like American Idol or something. The next step is like Apprentice. Yeah. That's it. <laughs> American Idol, they wouldn't have you on because it doesn't make sense. It's <laughs> just like. It's everything that I hate. That's why they think it's amusing, because they can see yeah. you're a little awkward and uncomfortable to dance, but you have a fucking relentless ego and shit on the rest of your programming. So it brings, <laughs> it brings the, the human side out of you, which people love, dude. Yeah. That's like, when you can relate to the rest of the world, that's when you're going to really have some fucking fans. I really think you should flip a coin. I did. It landed <laughs> on tails. Fucking flip the damn penny. You don't flip Yeah, you penny. don't flip a penny. You need, like, a good coin. Oh, like, it's a good coin. Like a 50 cent piece or some mm. shit. <laughs> yeah, man. Well, New Hope probably has uh, Buffalo New cool Hope. coins yeah. somewhere. <laughs> you go get a cool coin, but deciding on a coin rather than common sense. Just as it's gay thing, sorry, bro. It is, though, That man. it's gay shit can keep you alone whacking your own well, dick. Well, this is the way. You can look at it this way. <laughs> is two months of misery worth a new Lamborghini. Why is it misery? <laughs> yes, it's fucking worth a new Lamborghini. I don't think you need a new Lamborghini. But, I mean, that's basically, or, or like a crappy Rojo. Who's your dancing partner gonna be? They haven't decided. I don't know. Probably some bitch who's incredibly fit. As of now, I told him uh, there's prior things happening right now, but he is interested and sorry for saying no. Good God. You <laughs> said no already? Well, I didn't say no Call yet. Call back now. Give me the number. No. This is ridiculous. Take it. Well, wait, wait. I'm All right. gonna be furious. What's I'm this? Really mad, actually. Am I allowed to talk about that Mickey Rourke thing? What's that? He's got shit. Well, that's Dude, the thing. Like, movie? but the thing is, is that all the movies that that want me in it, they're not starting till March or mid March or April. So you, which time. usually sometimes gets postponed. No, it's happening as it's happening. So like, uh, and usually, dude, they're like, not gonna care that even you have with the biggest is. show on TV to promote. Even with Jack is. Reserve the whole month of March because we're filming, and then March will all happen, and they'll be like, oh, we got postponed to April first. Yeah, Did you know, like book your fucking just schedule. because they didn't get it all together in time. Right, you know, right, so right. like now I'm sitting at home with my thumb up my ass doing nothing in March when I could have been doing Dancing with the Stars, even though I don't want to do it to yeah. begin with. You're gonna seem like a pussy quitter. <laughs> quitter? I didn't even start. <laughs> it just seems so. It's like. You Dude, think you're better than dancing? Wh it's whatever. Like big deal. I don't think I'm better than that. I just don't dance. And neither that, did Jerry Springer. That might be the comedy. He in dances, it. I they bet. They put the fucking people who can't dance. Dude, through. every yeah. song, whatever song is playing, I'm just going to be thinking, Lambo, Lambo, <laughs> new Lambo, <laughs> duck. Lambo, Lambo, one, Lambo. one, two, take three, a, duck. Lambo, take Lambo. Take that fucking money. Don't buy a Lambo with it. Make a fucking movie with it. Make another fucking thing. Parlay your shit. 
I mean, that shit's gonna put you in front of everybody in the industry who's gonna go, oh, who, Bam or Jerry? Oh, yeah, that, what's he on, Dance with the Stars? Sure, throw him in the fucking cast. Sure, let's put him in our movie. It's, it's, you're putting yourself right in front of everybody who's in that industry. Everyone. Oh, there's no doubt about the Every exposure. Every white Tough watches one. that shit. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah, Whites for sure. make the decisions for most of those jerk-offs. <laughs> <laughs> and kids. Not, not kidding, dude. This is such a 50-50 thing, man. Yeah. Because the money is great. It won't be offered again. And it's not all that long. Two months of hell is worth a Lamborghini, I think. Yeah. Or a new house in L.A. or whatever. But, like... A summer place. You hate fucking February. You won't never have to have a February Speaking in the of, again. Speaking of... What? Why? Why? Hey, bam! I'll fix that <laughs> that February bumming for you. You got to do Dance with the Stars, and you'll never have to bum out in February again. True. Speaking of, it's true. You guys are going back. But I'll to be Canada? bumming out in February though by bumming out by doing this. Yeah. <laughs> no. You guys are going to where it's like colder. It. Coming yeah. Up. And darker. <laughs> Negative twenty degrees. And darker. <laughs> Colder and darker. Why don't you tour down south? And but nicer. <laughs> well, that's what we were thinking. It starts on the 16th, so that gives us time to go to the goddamn Caribbean if we shut up and just do it. I'm ready to go. I'm, I was going to book a place out of here today. Jesse's going to fucking Cuba or some shit. <laughs> Cuba. <laughs> Where are you going? Uh, Mexico. <laughs> In March. What, to Cancun? Yeah. Again? Yeah, that place is great, dude. It's a good beach. It's a bunch of jocks screaming at the mm. top of their lungs getting arrested. That's what I thought. That's what I thought, too. But it's not. It's it's exactly the opposite of that where we're at. But if you go into like town, then there's that. You know. Just said he goes to the Walmart in Cancun and gets a couple cases of beer for six bucks or some shit. A dollar, a dollar ninety a six pack of Corona. And then he just sits on the beach with like seventeen kids running around, <laughs> yeah. making sandcastles and burying drunk Jess in the Little street. Little rugrats <laughs> fucking changing shitty diaper diap blues all day. Yeah. Sounds like a blast. <laughs> yeah. Dude, Bring me another six pack. I got I got my son this like little Ludwig drum drum set and he does a drum solo and we're all going, London, London. Yeah. And he just goes, shut it! Right. <laughs> yeah. Speaking of Ludwig, did you ever order that thing? Yeah. You did? I, I talked to the dude, yeah. But it's gonna take a while because they have to get it from like Taiwan. What, you're buying a kit for that guy you bet a drum set on? It's not a guy, it's a friend of mine. No, you no Johnny Rack Pizza. No. Who is it? His name is Warren from San Francisco. You said you lost a bet, and now he, you owe him a drum set? Pretty much, yeah. What kind of bet? I can't remember what the bet was. It's like a $3,000 kit, and you'll probably get it for like $900. All right, cool. Yeah. Just get a fucking That's $200. Cool. Use no, because he's a good drummer, and he can't afford one, and, I, and I'm glad that I lost. Well, the cheapest this Why can't anybody afford anything? Because it's economy, Obama. <laughs> I guess so. Mohawk can't even pay 13 cents for a drink. That's cheap. <laughs> I'll take five. <laughs> I'll like seven, eight cents. I'll take four. That's how much a drink is in Mexico. 13 cents. So let me tell you about Novak. Oh, so God, now what? <laughs> he gets out of jail. Mohawk picks him up. He insists on giving him Novak giving Mohawk a hundred dollars to drive him to Baltimore because he has a doctor's appointment. All oh, right. Well, that doctor's <laughs> appointment was him getting loads of pills to apparently sell. Oh, but uh, of course, if Novak has pills in his hands, he's going to take some. So he's asleep the whole way home, and he, Mohawk was like, "Dude, he was a blast the whole way down." As soon as he gets the pills, asleep the whole way home. Then he like blacks out or something and and Jesus. he's supposed to give Abby his girlfriend six hundred dollars for rent. Well he finds eight hundred dollars that Abby worked for at Tekka, steals that, <laughs> flees the scene, nowhere to be found. When? And the thing After is the last week's dude, radio show? Yeah this happened yesterday. He looks bad. This happened yesterday. You see that? Yeah. He looks bad. Well, I heard from well, people he was looking pretty bad. Yeah. Well here's the thing. So, he's supposed to pay her rent. Instead of giving her the $600 that he owes, he takes her $800 while she's at work and flees the scene. Her Facebook status every other day is status, single. And then the next day, status, taken. Status, <laughs> single. Status, taken. Status, single. And she be like, I'm so through with him this time. This time, it's seriously over. 
Yeah, uh -huh, yeah, yeah, yeah. He'll yeah. be back tomorrow Talks and you'll take it. Dude, yeah. the last time she insisted that it's so fucking over, it's unbelievable how over it is. <laughs> he knocks on the door, they mean? talk She's it out for an hour. <laughs> Whatever it's it is, not, he's back at the over. house. When, you know what I mean? Over. So, like, she's trying to say, like, it's so over again after a week went by. It's like, uh huh. Yeah, <laughs> we, we all believe you. Like, we're more annoyed that she's accepting him back than him doing what he's doing. Why, why in his fucking he think, right why would head? I think he'd ever change. I actually put a credit card on the table to see if he'd take it because he was at my house for an hour yesterday. And uh, he never actually, I was spying on him. He never actually found the credit card. So I just put it, it back in my pocket when I was trying to leave. he'd do it again? That's the thing. Oh, I, so I knew that he was I muffed up on pills. Happened. So maybe if he saw one, he would, but he never saw it. I, I wish he would have so I could see what he would actually do. You like the kid, so it's hard for you to sit there and stay mad at him. That's the worst part. Yeah. He wrecks an $80,000 car, and in his head, it's like, Damn, I took pills and wrecked a buddy's car, and he's fucked now. Uh, did I hit rock bottom? In my eyes, yes. In his eyes, he'll like me again in three more months. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, what is rock bottom to him? Like, being homeless with a t-shirt on in the snow in Baltimore? It's like he, he is Sleeping in an alley? Changes. Like, what's he, rock bottom he to him? He stays like, a D in an alley? Novak's <laughs> a real charming kind of guy. He's like a nice dude, like... <laughs> A lot of junkies have that fucking ability, man. Like, because they're good at talking. Because they have to yeah. hustle everybody. Yeah, they're always lying, but their lies are so believable because they believe them. Yeah, I don't know why they lie. Like, well, Akuma, like, yo, I, I, Akuma, I make a killer chicken salad. Akuma, why somebody, why would you say I make a killer chicken salad <laughs> if you don't? Like, why tell me anything close to that? Akuma, he shows up chicken and somebody salad. was like, "Man, is he fucked up?" I'm like, he's not drunk at all. He's just on loads of pills. And he goes, "What? Would you say pill?" I'm not on any pills. I was like, Novak, I've known you for 10 to 13 years. I know that you're on pills nice. when you're so, on pills. Yeah. So, and and not to mention, whenever he's on pills, he order, always orders a soda. If he's not on pills, he orders red wine instantly, and he'll down it and then order another one instantly. So, like, I know. It's like, you're drinking soda telling me that you're not on pills. Well, yeah. if you're not no, on pills, you'd be no. ordering a red wine. No, pills he would drink wine. He drinks... Wine on Zan. So he goes. He, he goes to the Kuma bathroom, the locks the door, and Mohawk. I tell Mohawk, I'm like, he just went to the bathroom. He's like, well, boxing. I have to, I have to conveniently take a piss. So Mohawk goes to the bathroom. It's locked. He knows at Kuma because I think he worked there. If you put a dime in it, you could easily just turn it and it opens. So he did it, and Noak like quickly puts something in his pocket as he's acting. He's sitting on the toilet, faking taking a shit. So, like, Spends that was his excuse. Then he comes out even more muffed up, falling asleep at the table, texting a BlackBerry that, that doesn't even have a battery in it. It's dead. <laughs> so he's just like, Ugh. I'm like, no, back, the screen's blank. How, who are you typing to? And my buddy, I'm like, there's not even a battery in your fucking phone, idiot. <laughs> oh, uh, yeah, that's right. Imaginary text. He's incredibly coherent for a guy who's always on some random substance. But, like, to... Apple is his Sometimes only, it, like, does, that's his only chick it. that 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 would put up with it, and like he goes and steals eight hundred dollars. Like, she's young. yeah, but yeah. like, what's his logic in that? Like, he doesn't give a fuck when he's on pills, and then as soon no. as he comes off, he apologizes his heart off. Dude, junk is the only thing that makes you feel like you can do anything, <laughs> and it should be forgivable. Well, two oxycontins is equivalent to taking a shot of heroin. Is it? Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's pretty much it's synthetic heroin is what it is. It's rich man's heroin. But it either it does <laughs> what it, it does what your body's asking for, or it's similar. But I think if you're a heroin addict, you need the dope to avoid the sickness. Right, hair of the dog. Not a substitute. No, methadone well, would be the substitute. Methadone or oxycontin. Cleveland's up on methadone, man. I, yeah, I, it I was is. At his house. That's just house. government heroin. Dude. It's government like, heroin. Passed out all day and then like. But I mean, if you're if you're feeling minutes, sick from heroin, if you're yeah, feeling I, sick I, from I heroin, like oxycontin will totally help. Like you'll feel a hell of a lot better. I don't know. I'm not it's synthetic have heroin is what it is. Me personally, I'm not going to worry about it. I don't know. Heroin and me, no thanks. <laughs> you don't. How come you, you never got on heroin, fam? I would never. Dude, if I even saw. If I casually saw somebody, like, even ask for it, like, hey, man, you know where to get any heroin? I'd be like, 
I need to get away from this crowd even now. Even all these celebrities and rock stars that you think are awesome, you never felt like, I wonder what it's like to feel like that. No. Well, I of course I wonder what it would like to feel like that, but I see the outcome, and yeah. I don't want to touch it. Like my buddy Ron, you remember But, like, Ron. even asking for it, like, if you ask for Coke, there's code words. Like, you'd be like, hey, man, you got any book sugar? And it sounds normal and casual. Do you have any shark fins? Normal, casual. If you ask for heroin, it's like, hey, man, you got any heroin? Yeah. Like, I call it weird. I don't understand who is like, oh, heroin. Like, this has worked out so far for everybody else. So yeah. I want to try. Like, who's like, yeah, you know, like, I can beat this. I tried it. Yeah. It's, it's not that. It's saying, like, I don't you want to you want to feel the greatest feeling ever? In then try this. I tried it. But if you take a look at everybody, the outcome is always negative. Yeah. Pretty much. Well, Novak was saying, like, if you're on heroin, you could be laying naked in the snow and you won't even feel it. Like, you don't you, care. You, you nah. can, like, you're totally relaxed and comfortable. Like, you're happy. It's like, dude, you're in the ice cold snow. You're going to get hypothermia. But your body doesn't care because that you're already comfortable. <laughs> yeah, well, it's like, it, it, like whatever you want to do, if you're on heroin and, and you want to swim through an icy cold lake, like, you won't feel it. You'll be comfortable. Dude, put it this way. I got And my, that's why you want to keep doing more right. my, than you overdose. My appendix ruptured, and then there was this big abscess, and it was like the most pain you could ever imagine. And I would just lay there, and they give me Dilaudid, which is basically heroin. Yeah. And I, I, I get it, because I, I was like, picture an organ being ripped out of your body, and you're in the worst pain. And then as soon as I hit the button, I'm like... Oh, Geraldo's on, you know? Yeah. <laughs> like, you feel no pain. You're at perfectly all. happy yeah. being where you're at doing absolutely nothing. Yep. That's the thing. Like, you could sit there and watch Geraldo all goddamn day. Oh, and if yeah. somebody wanted you to get up and go see a show of a band that you like at the note or something that's a block away, you're like, fuck that, I'm happy here. Yeah. That's I'm, what it does. I'm happy watching uh, paint dry right now. Like, mo most people do want to be. Honestly, happy. like, yeah, <laughs> but. but but that doesn't if last you get every a, time he's high. Every time But if you do a shot of the lauded and it kicks in, you're happy sitting at your home at your couch watching TV. Yeah. If somebody's like Clutch is playing a block away, which is Jess's favorite band, he I'd probably, probably wouldn't cool. want to go see it. Yeah. Jess, I'm dope. <laughs> no, I I totally just being on that for it a It makes day you or content whatever. with doing nothing. It's kind of like I weed. Anybody who does addiction. weed, weed doesn't do that. Yeah, but weed makes you Paranormal. happy. If, well, in a small dose, it makes you happy being where in you're at doing 20s, nothing. It made me think of everything I should have been thinking. Just great. In my thirties, <laughs> smoking weed, it makes me the opposite. Paranoid. Fucking. I really hate it. The only time I want to smoke weed is when I haven't smoked weed, and then when I do, I'm like, wow, this sucks. I need to get some weed. It blows. I don't know. I'd love to quit smoking weed and get on heroin. No, absolutely not. But people need a vice, dude. Fucking the winter sucks. Like, imagine. <laughs> Everybody has a vice, whether it's smoking or drinking or smoking weed or popping pills. Or fucking loads of girls. Or fucking loads of girls. Everybody has a goddamn vice. Yeah. You really? have to have one. Miami vice. Oh, well, if you don't, you end <laughs> up Miami like, vice. You end up. <laughs> Doing some serious bad shit later. Secret shit, weird shit. True. You gotta let go of that fucking shit. Everybody's if, got if, it. If you don't smoke, drink, take pills, or smoke weed, then your vice is gonna be something really creepy, like like tying kitty yourself porn. up and, <laughs> and watching kitty porn in the bathroom, yeah. like while you're half hanging yourself, jacking off. <laughs> <laughs> something, something strange. Like something strange like that. Yeah. So you're better off just smoking a cigarette and shutting the fuck up. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that'll kill you a little slower. Dude, do you know how many bands there are out there? Billions. <laughs> like, not now. only a billion, I think a trillion. <laughs> because all I do is pay attention to new bands that come out. And, like, you know, I finally, I, I just got this new car that has Sirius in it. And I'm flicking channels, and like, if I hear a good song, I'll take a look at it and be like, "Who the fuck is this?" <laughs> like, and I pay attention to music. Like, mm -hmm. not even a major radio DJ could pay attention to how many fucking bands there are. It's impossible like, to keep up. With. Off the top of my head, this is are a bunch of bands that I've never even fucking heard of. Airborne Toxic Event, 
the dead wolves, the dead weather, die, 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 death, new pollution, <laughs> the murder dolls, you the murder the city murder dolls. devils. Yeah, I, I know them. Volbeat, which I like. Teen Beat, The Beat Stakes, Melody Club, <laughs> Tokyo Hotel, you Tokyo know. Police Club, Two Door <laughs> Cinema, Three Doors Down, Drowning Pool, Metric, Metro Station, Three Doors Grace, Fall from Grace, Graveyard, <laughs> Gravestone, Cradle to the Grave, Witchcraft, Witch, <laughs> Mumford and Sons, Mr. Green Jeans, Hard Hat Kitty Cat, <laughs> Shut the Fuck <laughs> Shooting somebody asshole with a dark gun. They probably got a fucking band for that. Yeah, I bet you Walking, was. for fuck's sake. There's a band called Walking. Look, Dave, here's a good article. Putting one foot in front of the other. Walking. <laughs> like, and you know what? Half of them are pretty damn good. Like, where do they all come from? But here's, the, here's the problem. The Guitar Center. A lot of them... There'll be one, and then there's about 27 copycats of that one. And then there's another, and then there's 39 copycats of that one. So, Well, the best thing I've ever heard, and I forget who it was from, it was somebody like Lemmy or something from Motorhead. He said, uh, it, you could take your whole life making your first album and make it brilliant, but you only have one year to make your second album, mm -hmm. and if it sucks, it's make or break. Yeah. Or if you're secret, it's wow, so you true. Like four years to make your second album, and six years to make your third. <laughs> yeah. Five more years to make your next. <laughs> uh, yeah, you gotta keep pounding out music, or people forget about you quick. Well, it's. I, I think that it's better to take your time and make a fucking masterpiece. And if it takes four years, and that's how long it takes. But those sixty. At least you're satisfied. It's true. Yeah, dude, it's so true. Oh. It's it's like it's like major Backstreet Boys fans, like girls who like are fourteen with all their T-shirts and fucking bracelets on, shouting at the top of their lungs. Now they're twenty-three years old and they're kind of over it, you know. Like just because they realize either a it's cheesy or b they haven't put anything out or c they're getting fucked. But now now, <laughs> now they're getting fucked and they don't give a fuck. Right. No, like like you were just saying though, because there's a million bands out there. Before, when we were younger, like, yeah, you waited, you know? Yeah. Deftones took uh, four years to make an album, but you just waited. Now, you don't wait, because there's a million bands that, th there's too much. But, and you forget suppose, about it. suppose you put out something too quick that's a piece of shit. Now it's even worse. True. We need to hurry up and put something out. Well, uh, fuck, yeah. there's another... Fucking uh, Hoobastank's coming out with something. <laughs> Fucking uh, Linkin Park's coming out with something. We need to make something now. Okay, picture Billy Idol. <laughs> but hold on, he hold on. still sells out shows at Atlantic City. Well, he's big he's time. been around forever. But what if... What if, Billy what if Billy Idol showed up looking like fucking Phil, 300 pounds with a big ass belly gun? People would be like, this is <laughs> pathetic. <laughs> this is the last time I will ever see well, Billy. Well, getting back to AFI, though, the thing is, they had a lot of young fans, and then young kids grow out of their taste. Thanks. That's yeah. what happens. What yeah. do you think is going to happen to Justin Bieber? You never know. Exactly. Well, he's, he's, set, either... up, he's set up to like have addictions, and like they're putting him like they're yeah. like, yeah, you're a superstar, yeah. man. They you're can't the wait. Biggest, you are the biggest star in the world, man. They can't yeah, wait like, until he goes well, out drinking. And he makes and... sure it goes to his head. That's sure yeah, yeah, yeah. His yeah. Head. Like they're that's the thing. Him up on purpose. When yeah. when he'll go to a bar and have four yeah. beers, and then he's a drunk piece of shit bender. It'll be Dude, look at Miley Cyrus. His manager is probably paying drugs. You know what I mean? They go offer him drugs nightly. Yeah. Oh, my prediction: Miley Cyrus is going to be Lindsay Lohan in two years. She's already taking most of her. She's already there. stealing necklaces, going in and out of rehab, blah blah blah. But like Justin Bieber, he could either pull a Justin Timberlake and be successful, or like think he's so big time that he starts partying it up and down, oh, not definitely. giving a fuck, and then next thing you know, he's like digging in the dumpster for a peach pit. But he probably won't because he's getting millions with all now, the shit that's going on. People want that from their celebrities, dude. They want to see them fail. Everybody loves to see a falling star. Yeah. That's and the, that's and the one main falling thing star now. that I'd like to see who isn't even a star is uh, Scott Disick. <laughs> he's uh, on. He's the on. Kardashian he's guy? on the Kardashians, yeah. and and <laughs> apparently he's rich and famous just because he's with the Kardashians, and like he dresses like he would call it nice, but I think it just looks terrible. And he's so pompous, dude. 
And not not to mention, this is what pissed me off. I just read a tabloid thing that said he just admitted that he's in love with Kim Kardashian. Now, he already oh, has a man. kid with Courtney yeah. Kardashian. Mm -hmm. What? Mason, yeah. That's his kid with Courtney right. Kardashian. Now he's admitting that he's in love with Kim Kardashian? Jesus. You're an asshole for one. Yeah. Not to mention you're a pompous asshole. Not to mention, but like, maybe... everybody wants... Everybody honestly wants to punch him in the face because he has no proper talent. And he's big time and rich and famous. What? What? It if, makes people what, mad. You know, you know how the press takes what you say and make it into a big thing. Though maybe they do that. Maybe said, "Yeah, Kim's attractive." Blah blah blah. And then they made it into. Oh, you know. Maybe that, that but that I doubt happen. it because Kim. you could see in the show the type of person that he is. Yeah. He he, he goes thinks he's the, the shit. One. He knows he's the shit. He goes out and, Chloe. And, yeah. The and chick is hit, dude. No <laughs> shit, he's, she's hit. It's fucking yeah. awful. I'd like, <laughs> she's the worst one out of the bunch. I'd go on Chloe. Just to fuck Kim anyway. I get it. Yeah. yeah. I but, don't like him. But they said, like, being Kim Better hates though. you. Maybe you two <laughs> should spend more time together, and uh, and we'll film it on Kim and, Kim and Chloe Take New York. So they filmed that, and and they've been him and Kim have been spending time together, and now all of a sudden he realizes that he's in love with Kim, and he admits that. Oh, well, listen to us. Who even knows anymore, though? Because, like, <laughs> they, they do all that shit on purpose for ratings. They... they plan all that shit so it could be just total bullshit yeah we're fucking either way right it's humiliating yeah, on their I'm part talking about it right now no but you mean he likes no. kim why would he like kim <laughs> he's so much better it oh may God. it may be a publicity <laughs> stunt he's got class kim is a fucking slut no it may be a publicity stunt but it's humiliating it's to chloe and it's humiliating to Chloe or whoever, Courtney or Chloe or whatever. It's and and plus for the dad and the mom, like it's fucking humiliating. Okay, yeah. Like even if they, if we'll give you two hundred thousand dollars if we could print this, like even that is just like, dude, it's humiliating knowing that your fat, ugly daughter, <laughs> like who has a kid with you, now he is in love with Kim. And I know we've said this before, but it really is fucking ridiculous. What the fuck do you do? When, when did it become all right to be Yo, famous your because your dad represented O.J. Simpson trial? Well, so, who, AJ. who gives a fuck? The way, th <laughs> this is what drives me insane. She fucked You fucking take a look at Kim brother. Kardashian, she's, mm -hmm. she's fucking pretty. What else? What yeah. other talent does she have besides being pretty? You could go to the King of Prussia Mall right now and find a hotter girl. That's what I'm saying. Right you could yeah. go to the King of Prussia Mall in Pennsylvania, which is the middle of nowhere, and you will find Walk five dime pieces that look better than she does. Yeah. And what do they get? Nothing besides working at Mac makeup. Yeah, exactly. Oh, and then they get paid. Yeah. A Hoover. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But I just I mean, don't dude, get it. Do something. Pick something and do it. Be an author, be a blah, but like blah, blah. you know, I don't know. I'm Fuck. thinking, I'm like, why am I watching these three girls? And I tend myself I've never seen the show. Flicking once, channels and I and I wind up watching it. Just because I can't believe that I'm watching somebody get their nails done and then their toes done and then they get a massage and yeah. then they get You know, they're probably like, so popular because she was on Dancing with the Stars. Was she? <laughs> yeah. That. That's true. Was yeah. she? Yeah. yeah. She was? Yeah. Pretty sure she was, yeah. Dude, that skyrockets fuckers, dude. Yeah. Dude. I don't know. Well, like, you you got me at don't... seventy thirty right now with this whole dance. <laughs> I'm with fucking the... telling you. I got offered to do Dancing with the Stars and I passed it up. And now Chad's telling me that I'm an idiot. Anyone would. Can I take another? Please? Absolutely. For the fucking I'll take money. Too. For the fucking connection. Chaz. Yeah, I'll take that. Thanks, Sarah. Here, John and Peters on Radio Bam. Dude. I'm on the fence with you, but I, I'm leaning towards do it because seriously, it's it'll help CKY, dude. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it'll help yeah. me have a mental breakdown. No, and no. on television, a mental breakdown is better on television than not on television. It wouldn't be on television. I'd be backstage, like I want to kill myself. I don't want to do this. But no, dude. The thing is, they they, they they know you. They they just want you to be yourself. That's how you feel in a February yeah. Pennsylvania? It doesn't feel like. like it, it, like I was saying before, it's like they want you not in your comfort zone, and they want you to be yourself because that's part of the appeal, you know. They wouldn't ask you. You would never go dancing at a thing like that ever in your life. They want to prove why that's they like possible. That. And the yeah. audience roots for the underdog, and exactly. if you really happen to be the underdog, then you're fucking in favor, and people love yeah. you. I just don't think I have it in me. I believe that you do, or you wouldn't entertain it this long. You would never yeah. hold anybody. Maybe if like. About it. You know what? Honestly, if I was ever going to be serious about it, I would ask to have a lady who's on it and spend two days with her and see if I even, like, 
Uh, you see those girls? They're hot. I haven't seen it. That's what I'm trying oh, to tell you. <laughs> like, I, I wanna, I wanna spend two days and see if I progressed at all. Yeah, ABC. Yeah, Bam said he would do it just for the pussy. <laughs> hey. Thank you. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> and, and make that your press release. <laughs> no. <laughs> for this fucking spare pussy. <laughs> spare. I do it for spare pussy. <laughs> it is uh, nuts though how much I've seen that like, like, oh who's Steve out? What's Jackass? Oh, St I'm rooting for Steve out. Exactly. Like, what's this for, Jackass? Oh, yeah, yeah. I, I never even seen. Like, Jack. believe me, I, like I've been at airports sipping on beers at a bar. Like, so what's up with Steve? Out? What place is he in? I'm like, place on what? Mm -hmm. Well, Dancing about. with the Stars. I'm like, what's Dancing with the Stars? Everybody watches it. Dude, Steve was a fuck up that people would love to see fucked up on drugs. They were like, oh, good for that loser. Let him fucking die on the shit. He goes on Dancing with the Stars. Everybody's like, is he okay? I he's, hope he recovers. He's the yeah. He's my hero. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Good, man. Last time I saw Steve-O, he couldn't even form a sentence. Yeah. <laughs> we went to the Sum of All Fears premiere mm -hmm. uh, a while back. Me and Steve-O bailed. And, uh, well, I, pissed I with hated him Some of the Fears. <laughs> and I hate <laughs> Morgan Freeman and Ben Affleck. They were both the stars. As soon as they stood yeah. up in the theater, me and Steve-O both bailed. And that movie was terrible, there. dude. And after hanging out with Steve-O, I had wished I stayed at the Sum of Fears. <laughs> <laughs> Did I tell you when I went to go take a piss at some of all fears premiere and Steve-O comes in and I'm pissing next to someone who's surely an executive at the movie company and he's just like, ah, oh, what a piece of shit. How much did they spend on that? And the guy knew it. He's like, oh, 97 million. He's like, there's fucking kids starving right now, and they spent 97 million on a piece of shit like that <laughs> to the guy who did the movie. <laughs> like, well, yeah, that's fucking hilarious. <laughs> it is kind of true. Yeah. I mean, but his attitudes change. Maybe. Well, I mean, you have to look at it like maybe this movie, who we what we spend ten million dollars on, will turn into a hundred million dollars. You have to take that risk. Paramount took that risk with Jackass. We spent ten million dollars on a film, That's and then it makes two hundred yeah. million. You put that fucking thing in three D, dude. How was three point five? You went to New York and did the premiere there. How was that? <laughs> what was it like? Uh, you want the truth? Yeah. <laughs> oh god, now what? Really? <laughs> uh, fuck it. The movie was probably good. The movie went great. I got to watch 15 minutes of the beginning, and then, uh, Tammy apparently oh. took an aspirin How from somebody. I know? That would be the next word out of your mouth when Yeah, you so, it. like, all I'm hearing is like, <laughs> Yeah, I, I, I. I'm like Tammy. Shut, and shut the fuck up. Mm -hmm. Please shut the fuck up. I'm like, <laughs> people are trying to watch a film. It's investors investing in this movie about yeah. where they're gonna promote it and where they're gonna put it and how many ads they're gonna put out. Now please shut the fuck no, up. No, 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 no. You do no nothing. You know, I'm just like Tammy. Please. I'm like, you're doing something right now. If, if you didn't do anything before, shut up, if you didn't do anything it. before, you're doing something now <laughs> by saying. Yeah, and being all loud. I'm not being that. I'm just like, dude. Uh, I'm like, oh, I'm like. So I have to look at the security guard. I'm like, get her out of here now. Really? Paramount paid five hundred dollars to send her to the Gonzavort across Whoa. the street to give her a room so she could just go to bed and fuck <laughs> off. Oh, You're listening to Radio Bam. It's Radio Bam. Action. Does it look like I give a fuck? Oh, holy lord, I got a motor. Strap yourselves in and lace up those shoes because you're listening to Radio Band. Turn it up, Faction. Radio Band, Series 28 Faction. I'm here with Jess Margera and Chad Ginsburg of CKY. We're at John and Peter's. What it is. In New Hope, PA, sipping on some drinks. Uh -huh. And uh, first of all, I had an out-of-body experience in Copenhagen by overdosing on loads of weed, Adderall, uh, cocaine, so and, and booze. And what did you find out? I had a choice to live it. Like, it was so, like how you said, it was so relaxing just yeah. letting go. But I took all my might to get back into my body and fucking, and, and stay there. And I was so mad once I was there. Why would like, you use any might? I didn't. I did. I had to, like, fight to come back. You know, when all I wanted to do was just float off, like, and, and I'm serious, like, I was 23 years old in Copenhagen, and like... What did you take? I took a bunch of Adderall, Coke, um, 
Was Adderall even around? A hundred dollars worth of weed that I swallowed, and I don't even like weed. <laughs> that's probably what it was. And you then. Were just that's what every. That's what people say, but I, it, it's not that, dude. No, when you black out. Um, I didn't black out. But, weed but, will do you wrong a lot. Like no, this did me so wrong to where I had an out of body experience, and I, and my whole life flashed before my eyes, and then it was basically, like, are you satisfied? Yes or no? Do you want to keep living? Yes or no? And like I yeah. said, yes. So then I like fought to like come back to life and go to the sink to drink water. Right. Suck it. It was terrible. Like it really was. And and like I hate when people say like, oh, you were probably just tripping on weed. No, I was going to die. I think we have nine lives. Because <laughs> I, I qualify a death as a cop or a doctor saying, dude, I can't believe you're still here. And I've heard that like at the least three times. The suckiest thing is, like, <laughs> now I know what happens. Your whole life flashes before your eyes. And then whatever result you come to, whether if you're satisfied or not, that's what frame of mind you're in. And that's what soul you have at that point. Like, I saw on a YouTube clip or something like that on the internet of this dude. <clears throat> he's, like, getting getting ready to get booked. He's probably going to get life in prison. And uh, he's sitting there huffing and puffing, and there's no cops there. And then he just whips out a gun out of his pocket and blows his brains out. And you could see that... Mexican? He's, yeah. You could see that his eyes are still there, and you could see that, like, his whole life is just like... Like that. Yeah. Are you satisfied? No. I'm a murderer, and I sucked at life. And that's his frame of mind. He's not going to hell. He's just that his frame of mind is I'm a failure. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like that's what it is. Heath Ledger, on the other hand, he probably been like, "Wow, I did a lot of cool fucking movies, and I didn't really harm anybody. Uh, I'm going to a good and place." And sad to say, that's another dude who he'll be immortalized because he died early, and his career will be. My life didn't flash. I, I just felt like I was in a black room, <laughs> sitting in a fucking chair, but I felt great. I felt really sober and in touch with everything. My body was flailing outside in the real world and it looked like I was struggling to survive. But my mind was as calm as could be. And then when you guys lowered me on the noose or whatever, my fucking feet hit the ground and oxygen started flowing to me. And you were always furious <laughs> to see the fucking earth. Yeah. I couldn't stand to see all you motherfuckers. Yeah. I was so mad. That's the one because of the maddest it's honestly, I've ever woken up. It's the worst uh, woke up I ever got. It's honestly a peaceful thing. It was like, like euphoric or something. Dude, I'm not. Yeah, I think I'm, that's how you not, go anyway, dude. As soon as you pass the point of being man. scared about it, it becomes peaceful. And it's sad to say, but it's true. I've never seen. Like. If you ever think your whole entire life, your whole fucking life, everybody who you ever met, and I met a lot of motherfuckers, mm-hmm. you'll see them all in a matter of five seconds. Yeah. Like, like, like a film like just going. Like, like book. Yeah, and you're like, oh, that happened, that happened, that happened, yeah. that happened. And are you satisfied? Well, no, I want to keep doing more. Like, that's what I thought, even yeah. though I wanted to actually... It, was, it would it, have been easier. Dude, it was so hard to get up and go to the sink. Like, yeah. so hard. For real, it's like, it's this scary. a bad trip, man. Are you sure you didn't get <laughs> any acid? Dude, I hate when people say that Did because... You people yeah. said it? I mean, it sounds I've like I've seen psychiatrists trip. in this very new hope about it. Not psychiatrists, um, uh... Psychologist. No, like uh, psychic readings. That's not even close to psychic. Well, well, <laughs> psychic. Yeah, psychic. Yeah. And he goes, don't, don't question what you thought. Yeah. Same with Missy. Like, dude, yeah. Chad. What? Chad. Yeah. What? Tell me that this is not a coincidence. This is the weirdest fucking ghostly experience I've ever had in my life ever. And any time before this. There's always been an excuse of why that happened. This cannot be explained. So, it's two years ago, summertime, and my screen door is open, and I'm flicking channels, and for once, I'm actually sober because I don't feel like going out. And me and Missy decide to watch uh, Sixth Sense. M. Night Shyamalan, Sixth Sense. Shyamalan, whatever. So... She's like, I don't want to watch this movie because every time I watch it, like, strange ass shit really happens and I don't want to do it. I'm like, well, I happen to like this movie and I haven't seen it in a long time and I want to watch it. It's the one with the boy? So we decided to watch it. People? Dude, yeah. we're watching it. She's getting all creeped out. 
as soon as it says in the movie, I've came a long way to see you, my gate opens, and I could hear it because it's summertime and the screen door's open, so all I have to do is look out the window. And I'm like, why is my gate opening and there's nobody there? So then I'm like, I'm going to check downstairs and see if there's anybody by the skate barn or whatever. So I go there, and then I honestly, it's far away. It's like, like, how far is this? It's a football field and a half at least. I'd say a football field away. Yeah. I see a see-through. He looks see-through because now I have to, like, question myself because, A, I'm not drunk, B, I'm not on shit, and C, it's far away. So I see a see-through person pacing back and forth, and I'm going, yo, I can fucking see you get off my property now. <laughs> like, yo, I see you. And <laughs> dude's not paying any mind, just pacing back and forth right in front of the light of the hobbit hole. And there's this big dumpster there. And I'm just like, I'm like, I'm going to get a fucking sword and I'm going to drive over there and stab you. Because I had to drive over there because I was nervous. Yeah. So I go get in and get a sword. Hop in the car. Missy hops in the car too. To and drive I, to your To yard. drive, yeah, my own yard. I'm driving a football to drive field away. To a see-through person. To a see-through <laughs> person. Yeah. Drive 14 acres. Because I didn't want to... I needed protection. I needed a car. Um, so I pull up to where it was, and now it's just a white owl sitting there. And an I'm owl? Like, and a white owl. Oh, Mrs. Owl thing? Yeah, and, and I'm 15 feet away from the owl, standing on the top of a dumpster, and I pull up five more feet, and I'm, like, super close to it, and it will not move. And I'm beeping my horn and everything, and I have a sword in my hand. I'm freaking out. And uh, I get out, and it was like, you know, like, rah, like trying to do whatever to scare it away, will not move. Then I look at Missy's owl tattoo on her arm, and then I look at her, I look at the owl, I look at her, I look at the owl, and I go, say hello to your dad. Why does Missy have that owl tattoo? Because for some reason it reminds her of her dad. She told me why. Um, I can't remember, but... Owls like represent that you know you're being looked over. Right. Either way, she's obsessed with owls. So like, she's got that owl I see tattoo. her owl tattoo. Then I see the owl that will not move. I say, say hello to your dad. Then she just starts crying her eyes out, saying like, I love you, I love you, I love you, all this shit. And then I walk her into the house, all crying and stuff. And I'm thinking it's too much of a fucking coincidence of her saying. I don't like watching Sixth Sense because weird shit happens. Then the gate yeah. opens for no fucking reason, which makes me go outside to take a look. And then I see a see-through guy pacing <laughs> near the Hobbit hole, which is a football field away. At then least. I threaten him. Yeah. Then I get the sword, hop in my car. When I get to the place, it's a white owl that will not move. Say hello to your dad. Yeah, After Sixth Sense just said, I've came a long way to see you. That's it's weird. Yeah. It's too much shit that could go on at once to be a coincidence. Like that happened, and I in I'm in New Hope right now at John and Peter's, <laughs> and I went, which is a witch town. <laughs> I I went to like a witch <clears throat> joint over there to explain my story, and they she basically said, "Don't question yourself, honey. Like that's what happened." Yeah, that's crazy. Yeah, like. You're not the, making up the white owl. A white owl. Dude, ass Missy. Uh, I've and, lived and, in Westchester all my life. I don't think I've ever seen a white owl. <laughs> and <laughs> At all, ever. <laughs> and, and another thing is, a year went by, and I told Louie about the same fucking story, and he was staying in the turret, and he uh, went out to the car to go get something, and he said that there was a fucking owl sitting there again. You know, like... Yeah. What do you believe? Like, do you believe that he really saw one, or is he just trying to make like? All that I know is that, dude, I was sober, so like, I can't even say like maybe I was a little bit drunk. No. Yeah. I wasn't. Darren, I was dead. Darren fucking he sober. Does, dude. He thinks he's seen. He swears, and he used to be a very cynical dude. Look, ghost. Yeah. It's all bullshit. Like he would think anything cynical, and he claims that he's seen. All types of images pass him on the bus. How, how many times has Darren seen ghosts on the bus? Yeah. 
<laughs> right? Oh, he saw yeah. a ghost on the tour bus. Yeah. yeah the tour bus. He said he saw some dude. Like 4.30 in the morning, looked, everybody's sleeping. He said it looked like an old school band. And the guy was like, he couldn't tell if he was like trying to arm wrestle his buddy or singing or something. Yeah. He's like, unmistakably. And dude, I got to say on that bus, because it was an old ass bus. I think the guy from Journey had a heart attack on it or something. Journey? <laughs> yeah, that's what the guy said. And uh, But yeah, like, dude, I just oh, felt, I... I've been on at least 20 different buses but on that one I was just like I couldn't sleep a wink well the What's only thing that I could question I can't remember the only thing I could question is <clears throat> like cause I'm trying to like remember and I'm like I'm really seeing a see through dude not paying any mind to me and I'm like yo I have a motherfucking sword in my house I have many swords in my house and I'm gonna go grab one of you and get the fuck off my property Paying no mind, still pacing back. And I'm, like, looking. It's so far away that I'm, like, squinting my eyes. Mm-hmm. And and he looks see-through. So, that's like, crazy. like so that's that's what I... That's the only thing that's questioning me. I'm like... You were sober? Yeah. <laughs> you, we have to clarify that. I was. That. I was sober. That, that, and that's the weirdest 100% part. 100% Like, maybe withdrawal made me see this or whatever. Fuck no, I don't like weed I at all. That, but I mean, who knows what happened? I don't even like weed. Well, this is the questions you're gonna get, dude. Like, yeah, it I know. Sounds but, like, unbelievable. Most that's what I'm saying. It's too unbelievable to to hear that. But like, all in all, is that I don't like weed, and I wasn't on anything at all. I wasn't on no booze, no pills, nothing. So what does that mean to you? Is it really? It is what it is. It has to be. It isn't. <laughs> the th- I like, dude. I could. Just picture a see-through dude pacing back and forth, and it's like, dude, I see you. It wasn't a deer. It wasn't a any. It was a dude see-through walking. That shit freaks me out, man. Like, cause I've heard other stories. Like, ape went to this lady who's kind of like one of those psychic people, blah blah blah. And this lady would like perform live, and you know, it was kind of just this weird shit, but whatever. But and um. This lady's like, all right, who, who has a son named, you know, blah blah blah. No one. And and you're you're up in the who balcony. Blah, blah, blah. This lady's like, who has a son named blah blah blah? <laughs> fucking uh, Alex or something. And and this lady's like, in the balcony of the of the club, and she's like, Alex wants to tell you something, mom. You know, whatever. Um, he was murdered, huh? And she's like, yeah, my son was murdered. She's like, who are you talking about? It, uh, it's it's this, like, psychic lady that... No, who? Who's, whose wait, son is named Alex? Wait, listen to my story. Listen to my story. This are, lady... Are you talking about Ape? No, no, this, this other lady in the audience with Ape. Yeah. And it's, like, a total random, like, lady. And she said, Alex wants to tell you that the person that you thought murdered her or murdered him did and the way he got in was the key under the turtle like the ceramic turtle outside yeah. and like she's like yeah my son Alex was murdered and nobody the cops couldn't figure out how the person got in mm-hmm. and he just told you know like shit like that is crazy see but everything else has an explanation like dude the most terrified I've ever been ever was sleeping at when we got the new Greyhawk house, I was sleeping in the basement, and I felt like a magazine got whapped over my head. And uh, and it was four in the morning. I'm like, Jen, what the fuck, dude? That's who I was dating at the time. And I'm like, what the fuck? Why would you do that? And I'm like, Jen, Jen. And I look around, and she's not there. It's like, Tim Glom's half-ass construction. The fucking no doy. Uh, but I run up the stairs with a blue face. <laughs> Like, my face is blue. I'm like, a ghost just hit me in the head with a fucking magazine. Then I go downstairs, and I realize that a light fell down, and it happened to land right on my face, which is odd because it's hard to lay down right in front of a light. But, like, that's what happened. Like, it was half-assed. It was the drop ceiling was built half-assed. So now I have an excuse to to say how that happened. But, like, this whole Al thing, dude, there is no way that you could tell me that this didn't happen. Well, that's what I'm saying about that Alex thing. How the fuck would that lady know that her son got murdered and the guy got in by the hidden key outside? Because 
It was Alex's friend, and he knew where the key was because he was friends with him. Well, it's what's sucky is that a lot of psychics know how to, they know how to read you, and they they look at your rings and they look at everything. But there's no way in hell she could know you that. You want to believe anybody's going to encourage you to? Yeah. Well, I mean, you could say like, so I could see that you have either a brother or a sister. Yeah, you're right. I do have a sister. Well, she, you know, like they feed off of your answers. Yeah, but this lady was just in the balcony, like, me, I have a son named Alex. Yeah, he got murdered. Yeah, he did get murdered. Yeah, the person you thought did it, he did it. He got in this way. You know, how uh, How would she know, know that? That's like that fucking Sylvia Brown bitch who goes on, like, Oprah and shit. Like, she goes, like, sorry, your dad got mar- murdered, uh, and he died in pain. What do you want me to say? <laughs> oh, Jesus, really? Like, she says that shit to people. Yeah, you had a and horrible like, time. Like, oh, uh, what do you mean? <laughs> She's like, that's just what they say. Sorry. Jesus. <laughs> you know what I'm talking about? Sylvia Brown? Uh, Dude, there's this the woman. weirdest thing I've know. ever seen. Your girl knows. You can look it up Probably. on YouTube. I forget what it's called, but it's this kid who grew up in Glasgow, Scotland, and he's like five years old, and he keeps saying to his real mom, like, yeah, you're you're my mom and all, but like my real mom is from Barra, and like we <laughs> lived on a island, and uh, planes would land on the beach, and I had a white dog with black spots on it, and her name was whatever, like, and the mom didn't know what to think of it. Finally, after him talking about it for so long, like a year or two, she decided to. She found out where Barra is. It's an island off the coast of Scotland. And uh, they went there, and they were trying to look for the house, and they couldn't find it. Finally, the kid found it, starts, like, crying about it. And then he says that their last name is Robertson. And uh, they looked up Robertson at the time and didn't find anything. Mm -hmm. Then two months later, they called back and said there was a Robertson family that lived at this house. Yeah. And, uh, like, they did have a white dog with black spots. It's crazy. And planes do land on the beach. Mm-hmm. Like, how would a fucking five-year-old know? Like, you're my mom and I like you and all, but my real mom, you know, like... So what, is the kid adopted or something? No, it's, oh. it's called reincarnation. Oh, yeah, yeah. Like, this, this was in, like, the fucking 60s or 50s. And now it's the... At the time, it was, like, the 90s, and this kid's five years old. That shit freaks me out, man. Like, how how would this kid even be able to make that story up? You know, like, my name is so-and-so. You, you might want to call me, you know, James so-and-so, but my real name is Scott whatever. Scott yeah. Robertson. Yeah. You know, next thing you know, it's like, I live at Barra. It's like, where's Barra? Yeah. It's on an island, and then you look at a map, and like, holy shit. There is a Barra. <laughs> B-A-R-R-A is what it's called. They flew in there, found the place. Uh, that's crazy, dude. I can't fucking believe that. And shit. the kid just like starts crying and stuff. Like it's 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 like too too real to not be true. I don't know, dude. I live on a haunted mountain in the woods. Just, I try to avoid it. <laughs> <laughs> I try to avoid Thank it. it. Yeah, house. but, but <laughs> I dude, I watch the all these. I watch all these like ghost stories and shit. Like. And everything, whenever you see a door close, all you need is a fishing string. Yeah. And then the door closes a number of years. Because <gasps> yeah. they want an episode. They want they want the Discovery Network channel to keep buying episodes. It's easy to do. That's... And if you, if, if you go to a place and spend all this time and money not getting any kind of ghostly activities, then you'll tie a string to a door and shut it. Yeah. What's the problem with ghosts? I mean, and, if they never murder anyone, then... There's That's what I'm worry. saying. Would you be afraid of gay ghosts if there's gay ghosts who suck each other's dicks <laughs> at your house? That's not appropriate. I can't handle it. But at the yeah, same well, time, are they going to be mad if you start jacking off to porn? But jack off to the idea that they're gay ghosts jacking off each other. I, I have a problem. And, and they it, do too. It sucks if, if you just. All right, say I die right now and John and Peters. What am I? I'm just going to lurk around fucking John and Peters for eternity? That blows. I don't want to do that. And you know what? <laughs> usually when you watch this shit, when you watch this shit, uh, it's usually people with, like, 
crosses doing ceremonies and stuff yeah. that would draw in more ghosts <laughs> you know what i mean like oh, yeah. you're doing that mm -hmm. if you're dr like if you're lighting candles and, and holding up crosses and saying get out of here it would just make me want to be there more yeah if i was a ghost it would draw my attention in and want, want me to fuck with you more all I'm saying is if I die and I just gotta sit around and listen to people have conversations all fucking day long, I'll kill myself again. <laughs> no, it, it would die. be fun. No, dude, I don't want to lurk around. I, dude, it would suck. Why would it suck? Lurking around, like, a, a place. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, lurking around, lonely, bullshit. You get to hear the shit that people talk behind your back. I might be <laughs> Or behind other people's back. You know, like... Oh, Chad's a fucking piece of shit. He thinks he's a man. Da, da, da. But like, when, when that goes, like, if you're a ghost, you're like, who's Chad? I want to know. <laughs> yeah, I've talked the same shit about everyone. Anyway. <laughs> ghost or not. I mean, I don't think I believe in ghosts. Yeah, exactly. All right, well, I think our time is up. Let's end this with a CKY song because you have a new record coming out. When? Jess. Uh, March. I don't know the number yet. But March, March something. Go on CKYAlliance.com and it'll tell you. No. CKY's got a tour. We're playing March 2nd at the Viper Room as a little fucking fun show, kind of rehearsal thing. Then Vegas, then the Music Tattoo Mar Festival. Viper Room in Hollywood, then March 2nd is Las Vegas at another small intimate place to CKY, and then Orange County Tattoo Festival Music with Suicidal and Biohazard, and I think uh, uh, Thrice and The Used. Hot Water Music. Hot remember, Water remember Music. Chuck? Yeah, I haven't seen yeah. Chuck for a while. Me neither. And then CKY's got a bunch of other dates coming up throughout the East Coast. We have Philadelphia coming, New York City. CKY returns to New York City. Do not miss that one. Stone Pony in Asbury Park. New Jersey. And the states are on CKYAlliance.com. Don't also miss... Uh, Bam and I and Louie come to Canada the 17th through the 24th. On the Freezing Your Ass Off Tour. On the Freezing <laughs> Your Ass Off Tour. Frostbite Dick Tour. But CKY's uh, record that's coming out is a record called uh, B-Sides and Rarities, which has a bunch of uh, unreleased tracks, some remastered shit that wasn't released properly, and a new song called The Afterworld. Why don't we play CKY The Afterworld? The video just got done, so we'll see that soon. CKY The Afterworld from the Jackass 3D movie. See you next week on Radio Bam. Later. Bam. That's Radio Bam for this week. We're done. done. Tune in next week for more. You can leave now. It's Radio Bam. Radio Bam every Monday. Seven, four, four, four. Radio Bam every Monday, 7 Eastern, 4 Pacific. Email me now at Radio Bam. Why don't you uh, take a picture of your sweet white ass and send it on over to Radio Bam at Sirius-Radio.com. Call Radio Bam at 877-PORNBAG. That's 877-PORNBAG. Sweet dreams, Peapod. Bye, everybody. See you next week. Faction. Later. Don't you